Lewin grew up in Egypt and has maintained a lifelong fascination with mummies. Today, in addition to his work at Toronto's Hospital for Sick Children, he is a leading researcher in the field of paleopathology. Paleopathology is uh, really the study of diseases of ancient man, and uh, that can be done by uh, examining the, the bodies themselves, and also can be done by the, uh, the latest use of X-ray technology. How could Dr. Lewin see into the life of this mummy and learn why she died without desecrating the sanctity of her death? X-ray technology, known as computerized axial tomography, or CT scanning, was the answer to Lewin's dilemma. The machine produces cross-sectional images of the body without touching it. When the slices are stacked together, a three-dimensional image is rendered. Dr. Lewin was assisted by CT technician Stephanie Holoka. Lewin, who pioneered the use of the technique to slice into mummies without using a knife, first scanned Jed in 1978. But the technology was in its infancy, and he was barely able to distinguish the ancient body from the dense packing material. Nearly 20 years later, he was ready to try again. Because the patient was already dead, Aloka didn't need to worry about radiation levels. That freedom enabled her to take numerous pictures at very small increments. She scanned the body in five millimeter slices and went to three millimeter increments for the head and neck. Even greater detail was used to image the ears and eyes. 300 two-dimensional images were taken during the four hours of scanning. Glimpses of Jed came through in these x-rays but it wouldn't be until they were stacked together that the ancient woman would truly come to life. Once the meticulous scanning was completed, it was finally time for the mummy to show herself. A computer compiled the pictures into a 3D rendering, but the quality was poor. In living patients, bone is dense and shows up white. Fat flesh and skin are gray. Liquid is black. In Jed's body, the bones had lost minerals and become softer, while the soft tissue had toughened. Instead of a high contrast image, Jed was showing up only in shades of gray. This low contrast problem meant that Holoka would have to painstakingly render the images slice by slice. Imaging the skull in a live patient takes 10 minutes. It took Holoka three hours to reconstruct Jed's skull and hundreds of hours to render the entire body. Holoka was then able to electronically peel away the layers. After removing the outermost layer of cartonage, she arrived at the linen wrapping that surrounded the head. Gray circles showed up over the eye sockets. The Egyptians inserted plates behind the lids to keep the features from sinking. Holoka also noticed that in keeping with the ritual, Jed's brain had been removed and her skull stuffed with linen. Finally, the image of a small young woman appeared. Based on the pattern of bone fusion, Jed was estimated to be 30 to 35 years old when she died. And the first thing I thought when I saw her skull, after doing a lot of 3D imaging on various skulls, is that she must have been a very pretty lady. She had very high cheekbones and she had a very well-defined chin. Holoka had used CT technology to excavate the mummy. Now, Lewin wanted to know what killed her. Could he determine cause of death 3,000 years after the fact? Lewin examined the 3D image of Jed's skull. He noticed a strange black shape on the left jawbone. The gaping hole, he realized, was an enormous abscess. Hard as it is to believe, Jed had died from dental disease. Ancient Egyptians were prone to dental disease because of their sandy, coarse diet and their love for sweets. 
what we found. They, they, this is the In Jed's case, the outer enamel on 24 of her 28 teeth had worn away, exposing the sensitive dental pulp and the root. Exposed roots are acutely painful. They also become infected easily. Jed's infection was spread from the root canal to the bone, where it caused several abscesses. Lewin surmised that the large pus-filled cyst probably burst, spreading infection throughout her body and poisoning her blood. It was probably an agonizingly painful, drawn-out death. She probably died a, a very, very miserable death uh, due to uh, general infection, which originated from this uh, basically dental abscess of uh, her left upper jaw.